I'm Tina. I'm Ross. And today we're back with another British cheese tasting. I wasn't actually expecting to be doing this so soon after our first British tea cheese tasting. We're actually very surprised at the amount of views we got on that. We've done other cheese videos and they're not getting a lot of views, so we we're very surprised to see how many views it got and all the great feedback we got from our viewers about their cheese preferences, suggestions for pairings. I found a cheese, the Kerfilly. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. I tried to look it up and saw a few different pronunciations, but I got really excited because that was one we wanted to try and I couldn't find it at the time. So we are going to be sampling that as one of our selections. So you're looking forward to this? I am. You are. <laughs> So let's go ahead and start out with the, it's actually Gorwith Kerfilly. As I said, I hopefully I pronounced that correctly. So this is actually an aged Kerfilly. This, we couldn't find just a regular non-aged one. So I just thought I'm just take, taking what I can get and we'll give that a try. So it's aged for about three to four months. And this is a cheese from Wales. So you're ready to give this a try. So here's a little piece. And what's kind of interesting about it is that you can see it gets kind of ooey gooey towards the edge and it has a rind. I did read that the rind is edible. I, I don't know how good it tastes. Some rinds seem to be tastier than others. And it's just a matter of personal preference. So I don't know if you just want to try a little bit first and then sample it with uh, a parrot. Do I start with the ooey gooey or work my way to the core? I started with the inner part. Okay. See, that's the difference between Tina and I. Most cheese I buy <laughs> is not on the ooey gooey side. It's <laughs> usually the firm, solid side. And the, as cheeses go, this is not really all that ooey gooey, but towards the edge, it's, you know, they start to ripen and, and they start to get a little gooier. So that was nice. I, I enjoyed that. I, I did see it described as kind of lemony, and I, I do get that. And it's supposed to get more mushroomy as mm. we get to the edge. Okay. I also brought our Branston pickle again to do as an accompaniment. Mm -hmm. I think I am tasting more mushroom. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you get towards the edge. And then I did I did eat a little bit of the rind and it, it was not bad. It looked a little bit scary looking at it, but it's not bad, but sometimes it does have a little bit more of a slightly gritty texture to it. It is scary. But it's really looking. not bad. <laughs> I'm actually going to try a little bit on um, crack bread. I'll put some on bread with a little Branston. Let's put a little bit on because it is it's fairly mild. I wasn't sure what to expect since it did say it was aged. Sometimes that will make them stronger, but fairly mild. I tried to start with the mildest first and then go towards the more intense flavors. And we do have some cheeses here that have things in them already. So whether that's chives or mustard, so we'll be getting some flavors from within the cheese too. Okay, where, where you lead, I will follow. <laughs> so. Yeah, I just went real light on the Branston pickle and it is nice. I got just a small piece of this cheese and it was fairly expensive. I think this is the most expensive one we picked up. And of course, Whole Foods is always expensive, but even as Whole Foods goes, it is on the pricier side, but I would definitely get this again. I, I enjoy it. That's a good savory combination. Something I do see. Mm -hmm. That's a lot to waste. <laughs> to be fair, I knew you were going to go for it. I see. Oh, it was not going to go to waste. We also have some grapes here. I don't know if you want to have a little grape in between. But yeah, I could, I could really taste the mushroom in that. Yeah. But as far as lemon, were you tasting lemon? A little bit. If you just tasted the inner part, mm -hmm. slightly lemony. Yeah. But you like that one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I appreciated it more with the Branston mm -hmm. and some sourdough. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. So next one up, we have uh, Cooper's Hill from Summerdale. 
And this is a double Gloucester with chives and onions. And this is something we've had at Trader Joe's. This is from Whole Foods, this one we just picked up. But we've had one called Cotswold at Trader Joe's. And it's, mm. I, I believe it's the same thing. It's the, it's the double Gloucester with the chives and onions. So I think we already know that we'll probably like this one. I know you love cheese with onions and things in them. So mm -hmm. let's give this one a try. Excuse me. Mm. Yeah, that's delicious. I love the chives and onions with the cheese. Yeah, this is cheese I could snack on all the time. Oh, yeah. This is great. Now, I don't know that I've actually run across, or at least I haven't sampled double Gloucester just on its own without something in it. So mm. I feel like I don't know exactly what the cheese on its own tastes like because I've always had it with the, the chives and onions. Mm. We're gonna go through that one quickly. I can, I just know it. <laughs> yeah, has a really nice onion flavor to mm -hmm. it. I think I'll have another piece just on a cracker. Sure. Okay. And I actually feel like I'm not exactly sure what to pair with it when it already has stuff in it. You know, like the chives and the onions. I'm a little bit more hesitant to pair it with something. Okay. All right, go ahead if you want to. Go ahead and. Pair it, go ahead. <clears throat> Little dab of Branston. I don't know if this is a faux pas. <laughs> mm. Sometimes you never know until you try. It was like trying blue cheese with honey. At first thought that didn't sound like And we really perfect. enjoyed that. And next up, a lot of people suggested the chocolate pairing with a Stilton or blue cheese. And we have, we'll have to give that a try because I was not sure about the Stilton with the honey and I really enjoyed that. How's it with the Branston? Not bad. Do you like it? Mm hmm Where was it that you first learned of this cheese? Was it, you just discovered it at Trader Joe's? I think I may have had it at Trader Joe's first. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I think so. And I feel like I've always gotten the Trader Joe's brand. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to get one that um, was from another, another creamery, I think. Now, the thing with Trader Joe's is a lot of times it's difficult for us to tell on the label exactly where it's coming from. It will say product of United Kingdom, but we don't necessarily know the particular creamery that makes it. So this one we do know it's it's Summerdale. And another little rant about Trader Joe's. <laughs> Here it comes. If you watched our other video, if you haven't seen that one yet, make sure to check it out. I'll put it, link it in the description below and also up here, I'll make a link. Um, I discovered Lancashire cheese at Trader Joe's. I'll, I always like to go by their cheese section but, and just look for something new that I haven't tried yet. And I saw this Lancashire and we tried it and I really loved it. So I kept picking it up a couple times and then it disappeared and I couldn't find it. So finally I asked somebody about it and they looked it up on the computer and they said, oh, they're not making it anymore. Now, first off, I wanna just say, don't tell me the UK is not producing Lancashire cheese but I guess wherever they get it from, it was just sort of like a little special run that they did for Trader Joe's. So I was actually very disappointed because I fell in love with that cheese and that's the only place I think I have seen it. I have not seen it at Whole Foods. I should probably ask them about it because maybe they can obtain it. But um, I haven't seen it at any of our other cheese places. Now possibly our, our favorite cheese shop, Carmel, they may have it because they have hundreds of cheese. If, if we could get it anywhere, it'd be there but that's a four hour drive for us. So yeah. I, I was excited about Trader Joe's because it is so close to us, but so much for that. Well, now you're getting me started. Cause I got a little <laughs> you know, throw on my side too with Trader Joe's because we loved also shrimp toast. And I find it hard to believe that that was not a popular item. Yeah, no, they stopped carrying it. Same thing, we don't make it anymore. Another thing was, which I thought went very well with cheese, just that this is a cheese related rant. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> they made a really good garlic onion jam mm, that was yeah. uh, good with, you know, a nice little condiment for meats and cheese. That would have been great. And it was, it was excellent. I enjoyed it. Yeah, we don't make it anymore. I wish Trader Joe's would simply stop discontinuing items that that are delicious. Yes. Yeah. We've had that happen several times. Shrimp toast, though. That was the 
top of our our list. Of, yeah. Okay. Enough of my my rant. <laughs> we'll move on to the next one, which is another cheddar. We did try cheddar in our last review. It wasn't quite as aged as the one I picked up now. And the one we had before was from England, whereas this is a Welsh cheddar. And I know cheddar is from cheddar in England. <laughs> we know about that. Um, but we did find a Welsh cheddar, and it is Collier's Powerful Extra Mature Cheddar. Extra mature. Extra mature and powerful. So we'll see how this is. Are you waiting for me? <laughs> I was waiting for some kind of reaction, like extra. That's good. I think it's good, but it wasn't as powerful as I was expecting. It's called extra powerful, and it's not <laughs> powerful, as powerful. extra mature. I, I forgot to look and see how many months this is aged, because usually it depends on how many months they're aged. I was expecting this actually to be a bit more crumbly and harder with more of the, the crystals in them. Are you getting crystals? No. Hmm, me neither. I like the crystals, but no, there's no... I, yeah, no I kind thing. of expected that with the, the extra mature, but... Yeah. It's still good, though. Yeah, I like it. There's a strong flavor to it. Mm -hmm. Definitely has a nice, nice flavor to it. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like... Now, granted, we have not been to the UK yet, but just based on what some of our viewers have mentioned, I feel like maybe just like your general standard grocery store on sale cheap cheddar is probably of higher quality in the UK than we get. Yeah. I feel like ours is probably a bit more mild tasting. It's not like you can't find American produced cheeses that are like this. You can. I just feel like you have to go to the deli section, go to some special sections to hunt it down. Do some research. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so would you like to try that with Branston I'm going to try it with a little Branston, yeah. Something else a few of our viewers have mentioned that I would love to try sometime is the Plowman's Lunch. Yeah. Which I believe you do use cheese as well as some of the Branston. I forgot what else is on it, but it sounds good. I want to give that a try. Yeah, that goes nicely with the Branston pickle. See what you think. You like it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed that cheddar. Not exactly what I was expecting. I did expect it to be even stronger than it was, especially when I called it self-powerful, mm -hmm. extra mature, but still, I really enjoyed it. Okay, I'll snag another piece right now. <laughs> yeah, from what you were describing, I was almost expecting crystals mm -hmm. as well, but yeah, it was good. So next up, we have another cheese from Trader Joe's. This is a British mustard and ale cheddar. So we do have another cheddar. And I feel like this is similar to something else I tried called Red Dragon, which I believe is a Welsh cheese that has mustard and ale in it. Welsh cheddar with uh, mustard and Welsh ale. But I have not tried this from Trader Joe's yet. And again, it said product of the United Kingdom. I don't know exactly where, but let's go ahead and give it a try. There's another one I'm not sure about pairing it with things because I have a feeling it's going to be pretty strong. <clears throat> or at least the flavors in it, especially with the mustard. Mm. Yeah, I definitely have the mustard seeds in there. Mm -hmm. That's probably the most prominent flavor I'm getting from it. Strong mustard aftertaste. Mm-hmm. Yeah, soft texture. Yeah, this, this is good. Mm -hmm. I like it too. I It's been a while since I had the Red Dragon. I feel like the Red Dragon was even stronger as far as the mustard flavor to it, but it has been a while, so I don't remember for sure. I'll have a little bit on a cracker. Yeah, that mustard seed is kind of a, kind of a nice crunchy It does. Texture. Yeah, it gives you a little crunch to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see what you think with the Branston. Yeah. I was not sure with the mustard whether I would want to pair that with anything or not, but it is it, it is a milder mustard than I was expecting. Let's try a little bit. <laughs> I 
Blooper reel. <laughs> do, 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 do. You like it? I do, but I almost feel like the Branston overpowers the mustard flavor a bit. I would agree. Yeah, I do enjoy it. I do like Branston. I'm glad mm -hmm. that we were introduced to it in the comments. There were people suggesting we try it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm glad that we gave it a go. And, uh, yeah. Tell me about it. We were just saying a moment ago, oh, I was expecting crystals. And so we have these nice crunchy little mustard seeds. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I can taste the ale in it because the mustard is pretty prominent. Yeah, I'm tasting more mustard. For a moment I thought I was tasting <laughs> ale and I'm like, well, oh, oh, that's psychosomatic. <laughs> yeah, um, just the power of suggestion. Mm-hmm. It's got a nice flavor to it. Um, so, I mean, is this one that you just prefer by itself? Uh, I think I prefer it by itself. Okay. You know, maybe there's a good drink to pair it with. Maybe it will go good with an ale. Maybe. Make a nice pairing for that. And okay. last but not least, we have one that looks more like a dessert cheese, so I saved that for last. And last time we tried a blue Stilton, this time we're trying white Stilton with apricots. And I have to say up front, cheese that already has fruit in it is usually not something I pick up, but it was the only white Stilton I have found. I don't know that I've seen just plain white Stilton around here. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a try. That's what this channel is all about is just trying, getting out of my comfort zone and trying some things that I don't normally try. So, and I kind of made a big mess out of this. I put it on the plate and I had a feeling it was going to be crumbly and boy, it sure is. Yeah, it looks very crumbly and, um, It looks like it's just full of bits of apricot. Mm -hmm. What do you think? You know, it's not bad, but again, it's probably wouldn't be my preference. Hmm. What do you think? I like it. It's, um, I, I thought from a glance that maybe it might be a little on the sweeter side. Mm hmm But, um, besides the apricots, is there something else in it? I think it's just apricots. You say apricot, I say apricot? It's close. <laughs> okay. I blame my dad for that. <laughs> goes, oh, every once in a while I... You hear your parents talk, and I just remember just out of nowhere hearing my dad say almonds, almonds. And he'd always call it almonds yeah, almonds. I, yeah. And um, I, I don't know for some from some reason I, I pronounce it apricot, apricot. Okay. To I think it. either is correct, but it seemed like I've always said apricot, and I didn't realize you were an, you're an apricot person. <laughs> I, I will con conform <laughs> if it makes things. Smoother. You pronounce it however you want. Okay. Actually, what's interesting, how, how is it pronounced in the UK? Is it apricot? Like we have tomato, tomato. Pasta. Pasta. Yeah. I'll try a little bit on a piece of cracker, too. I'll try a little on a piece of bread. I know you said it's it's not your favorite. You, you typically don't go for cheeses that have fruit in them. I don't. And I know that uh, <clears throat> you won a contest where you received... A boatload of cheese. I'm trying to remember the details. You weren't home and you I, received I was home. The package. And I would, it was. Tina won this package. <laughs> uh, some nice prizes and just a boatload of cheese. And I one of them was like a it was a cranberry. Was it a cran or a blueberry goat cheese? Yeah, yeah. I think it was a cranberry goat cheese. And I thought, oh, this looks this looks really good. It looks delicious. That's what I found out. Oh, no, you're not really a big. Sweet. I think it was cranberry and cinnamon. Cranberry, cranberry, yeah. yes, thank you. Cranberry and cinnamon. Yeah, for me, it's just okay. I would love to try white Stilton on its own because I don't want to say I don't like white Stilton because I don't know because I may really love it with just on its own without the the apricots. But I have to say, 
when we did the Wensley Dale, I could only find it with fruit in it. We have blueberries. I think I enjoyed the Wensley Dale with the blueberries <clears throat> better than this. And I think a lot of that is, is because, well, I know Wensley Dale's a good cheese, but um, I, I just prefer the uh, blueberries over the apricots. I like the taste. I'm just not wild about the crumbly texture. You don't like the crumbly texture? Yeah. It's just a personal thing. I, when I'm cutting it, I don't like to have nice even pieces. <laughs> I don't want to fall apart. I know it's very, I know it's a very minor yeah. thing, but really it's just. Certain cheeses are really crumbly. Yeah, it's just yeah. what they are. All right. So. A lot of blue cheeses are crumbly though, and you love blue cheese. I do. <laughs> I like a good, strong, stinky blue cheese. Yep. Yeah. Overall, did you have a favorite out of all of these? Hmm. Finn is pawing. He's pawing. Yeah. We have him walked out of the kitchen and. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Finn. Maybe you can sample a little cheese after after we're done here. <laughs> <clears throat> a favorite. Um. I'm going to give a Tina answer. Depends on your mood? It depends on my mood. <laughs> I'm on board with that. I'm going to sound terrible here because I don't remember the names of some of these. But I, I think the one that really less stood out to me was this one here. The cheddar? Yeah, the, the Welsh cheddar? Yeah. Uh, it, it, to me, it just didn't stand out as much. I mean, I liked it. I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. I just think that the other cheeses that we tried maybe had a little more flavor to it. Mm -hmm. So, what about you? What was your favorite, though? Not oh, my favorite. I know you said it depends on your mood, but I thought, like, if you had one that... Because hmm. you mentioned the one that you thought didn't stand out as much, but was there one that did stand out? Well, if I'm... If I'm preferring a cheese that's uh, not, not sweet, I would go with this one here. That one here? Yeah. What what about, I thought you might go for, and maybe you've forgotten because we don't have any more uh, left, the the, um, <clears throat> the Summerdale Cooper's Hill, the double Gloucester with the chives and onions. Okay, I changed my answer. <laughs> changed your answer, yeah. yeah well, that'd be number one. This would be number two. And there's only one real sweet cheese. But this is the first cheese I ever had that had apricot. Yeah. Yeah. That apricot <laughs> in it. And, uh, you know, we tried cheese with cranberries and cheese with blueberries. Uh, I thought apricot was a nice change, mm -hmm. just to see how it pairs well. I don't know if we actually had cheese that had a pear in it. I don't think so. I mean, pear is a great accompaniment to cheese, but I don't think I've actually had cheese with pear already in it. Okay. It seems like apricot, blueberries, cranberries are, are typical ones that they will put in. Okay. Your turn. What was your favorite? What was your least favorite? I kind of suspect I know what your least favorite is. Yeah, that was not too hard to figure out. That was the one I was kind of like, eh. the st yeah, the, the Stilton. And again, it's not um, anything on white Stilton. It's just my preference for not having the apricots in it. Um, I might go for the Gore with Kerfilly as my favorite. Um, but like you say, it might depend on my mood. Um, you know, if you feel like I'm really going to bring out a a nice cheese tray, I might go for that one. If I just want to sit there and, and snack on something real quick, either the, the the Cooper's Hill, like you said, or just one of the, the plain cheddar, the extra mature cheddar. I, I really like those just for quick snacking cheese. But overall, you know, they were all good. Yes. I don't think we had any that we wouldn't eat. It might take us a while to go through the, the apricot one, but um, otherwise, that was a great selection. This was really fun to do it again. Um, I have to keep looking for British cheeses in our grocery stores, supermarkets. We're gonna wrap up now because Finn is flying at <laughs> yeah. the gate. He's really getting uh, persistent here, wanting a little piece of cheese. So we'll probably let him have a little piece of something here and we'll finish off um, some of the cheeses we have out here. So if you like food tasting and reaction videos, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel. We would love to have you on board. And until next time, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.